Hey guys, it's been a minute. I'm excited to be back. Today is 10 Minute Testimony Tuesday, and I'm really excited about the people we have on today, guys. Uh, uh, we have Lehman from uh, Banging for Jesus, which I think he has another name he goes by. He'll clarify for us. And then we have Lacey. Um, she's actually part of the Jesus Alliance. She's part of uh, Beautiful Restoration. She's part of our Power Evangelism team. And uh, this girl has quite the story. So if you're new to 10 Minute Testimony Tuesday, how it works is we go for approximately 10 minutes, uh, not married to the timer. We're, we're here for the father. So if it goes 12, it goes 15. Okay. At, at about 15, I'll cut you off though. Um, and then we'll probably set it up to do an hour option, uh, which both of these people could easily have an hour, I'm sure. So I'm really excited about Lehman. So we're going to jump in. He's going to pray for us. If you will, guys, share this out. Um, I know his story a little bit, but I know it's enough that there are people out there that um, are going to want to hear what he has to say. So let me bring him on and let me get going. Hey. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> good morning, good morning. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And yeah, uh, uh, so the brothers, they call me uh, Brother Ray, you know, okay. just to clear that up too. But yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, so did you want me to go ahead and pray us in? If that's yeah, yeah, go ahead and pray us in. We, if it ain't about Jesus, I ain't about it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just want to lift you up and praise your holy name, Father. Thank you, Father, for giving us this day, Lord, and uh, watching over us, protecting us through the night, and just continue to breathe life into us, Father. I thank you for just loving us the way you do, Lord, and I pray that uh, you would just continue to shine your light in our lives, Father God, that we may be that light to those that are living in darkness and those that are in darkness, Father. I pray today, Father God, that your will be done, Father, and that whatever you put in my heart, Father God, that I share it with them whoever's listening, Lord, and that it may lift them up and uh, may hit their hearts, Father God, and let them know that there's hope for them, Lord. Yes. I just thank you for hearing us, for loving us, Lord, and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So, Lee, uh, Ray, sorry, yeah. I apologize. Um, so, the reason initially that I'd, I'd been seeing you, because, you know, we do the banging for Jesus thing, or, you know, and we do the Jesus Alliance, I got my shirt on, and, uh, <laughs> you know, your, your group's part of that. Um, but I seen a photo of you and it looked, you were with a huge gun and you could just tell you were a different person then. Oh and, yeah. And so I was kind of wanting you, I mean, you can go anywhere you want to with this and you know, we're, we're pretty free, but what, what led you from that picture, that moment, that lifestyle to where you are today? Cause that a guy, I, know. I don't know that guy. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, that's why, uh, I love God so much, you know, cause I've known, um, who he put on real quick. Elijah, please just let them know I'll be out there in five minutes. I'm on on live real quick. <laughs> yes, but uh, yes. So you know, I, I used to run the streets. You know, I was stuck in this mm -hmm. gang for uh over twenty years. You know, and at as, as a youngster, but uh, my street name was Demon. You know, and uh, that's somebody that uh the devil had his hand on. You know, back in the day, and I just, I just in that lifestyle, my main focus was on just um, doing bad stuff, you know, just just selling drugs, just mostly just hurting the, the people that I consider my enemies, you know. Living in that gang lifestyle, you you look at uh, other gangs as enemies. And, you know, we was blinded by the, the number one enemy, the devil, right. you know. So, you know, in that lifestyle, that's one thing I always did was made sure I had guns with me to uh, just retaliate or, you know, just build this reputation up to, to uh, you know, for this name demon that I went by, you know, and it, all it was, was like I said, it was just living for the evil one and I didn't know any better. But uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I've been to prison four times. I've been to juvenile, you know, detention center most of my life. Like that was my second home. And, and by God's grace and mercy and, you know, by the power of God, me and these brothers were able to go back to these same places where you've been, the juvenile place. You know, we're able to go back there and shine a light of Christ on these youngsters, you know, uh, let them know like, hey, man, this cell you're in. I used to be in that cell back in the day. I know what you're coming through. I know what you're going through. You know, I know these things, you know, and and it's it's wonderful because these these guards, they 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 be like, man, we love y'all because. Like, you know, we can relate. And that's why God, I believe with all my heart, God's using us, you know, in these certain and particular areas, because we've been in that lifestyle. We've been there. We've done it to where we can go back. You know, it's easy for me 
to go and preach to somebody that don't know me and tell them about God, you know, but it's even better to go shine that light and tell the story of God changing my life to somebody that knew me, you know, like I, I done run across so many people and this is just, you know, giving God all the glory, but it does something to me too. When I hear people uh, tell me, Hey, you know, but, you know, I have to tell them, they don't call me demon no more, but they'd be like, Hey, uh, out of everybody I knew, you're the one I thought there was no hope for. And that just tells me like, man, you know, that's the power of God. When you think that there, you can't change or this and this, man, God is able to. With God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so that 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 experience I had, um, uh, it, it really did it for me was um, I, I felt like I was about to get life in prison, you know, going to prison four times. It took me. I was hard headed in. You know, uh, my family, my grandma and them, they kept praying for me and everything. But I just was stuck in this lifestyle. I didn't know any better. You know, I was just stuck in it. I love the streets. I was married to the streets. That was my motto. You know, I just I, I, I was stuck in it so bad. But uh, I had a shootout, you know, with the SWAT team in Norman. Wow. And uh, I didn't know it was the SWAT team. And I just started shooting through the front door at him. But uh, that, that kind of did it right there, you know. Um, that scared yeah. me a little bit because they were trying to offer me 30 years fed and uh, I didn't want to watch my children grow up in pictures anymore. You know, so I, I cried out to God. I did. I cried out to God and I said, God, uh, please help me. Don't let me rot in prison. Help me. You know, and I made this. It's crazy. I made this promise to God and I said, uh, God, uh, if you help me in this situation and don't let me go to prison for the rest of my life, uh, I will never touch a gun again in my life. And what's crazy is I that, that was a promise I made. I said, I will never touch a gun again in my life. I didn't say I will follow you or anything else. You know, and that's what tells you how my mind frame was. All it was was I will never touch a gun again in my life. And what's crazy is uh, I believe God showed up with me, you know, for me on that situation, man. And, and instead of getting 30 federal years, they end up giving me five years nonviolent. they dropped the shooting because uh it was justified you know and they charged me uh with a simple possession of a firearm because um wow uh, yeah that's crazy yeah yeah so they charged me with a simple firearm and out of years i would only have to do two years nonviolent. so wow. that being said uh man what i did is when i went to prison i didn't even remember what God did for me. I just started even hustling even more in prison, do even going harder in prison. And uh, I got out of prison and moved in with somebody else and um, got raided there. You know, the house got raided there. I wasn't even there long enough for them to do a home visit or anything, you know, just fresh out of prison. Well, uh, the police SWAT team come in about six in the morning to um, and they charged me with a gun. They charged me with some drugs. And I go to the Oklahoma County Jail. Like, this is after, like, right kind of after all this. But uh, I get out of the county jail and I go on a run. And uh, I go and get me a little place to live in. And, uh, man, I'm hiding out from the police. Well, eventually they find out I'm there. You know, I'm selling drugs there and just doing bad stuff. And they find I'm there and they raid that house. And they catch me with another gun. Catch me with a bulletproof vest. Uh, a bunch of ammunition, mm. and uh, I go back to jail, and I bond out, get out again, and uh, I go on a run. I'm like, man, I ain't, I ain't finna go to court. I ain't doing none of this stuff, and uh, I go on a run again. And I'm like, on Father's Day, I believe it was, uh, I go to my baby mama's, and they raid that house. They find out where I'm at, and they catch me with another gun, you know. And so I go back to the county jail, and this time uh, I'm trying to have my people uh, bond me out. And when I do talk to them, they tell me um, there's no getting out. The Fed, the federal, uh, you know, marshals, FBI picked this up. Wow. So I couldn't bond out. So when I when I couldn't bond out, it was like this promise I made to God hit me. I said, God, I'll never touch a gun again in my life. And here I caught three back to back to back. And it hit me so hard and it put the fear of God in me. And I didn't even know God like that, but it did. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. I was like, Lord. Uh, I know I said something before, but please, this time, please, if you if you love me, Lord, if you are willing, Lord, 
please don't let me rot in prison. And this day forward, I will serve you. I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to serve you, Lord. You know, and yeah. I, I in, in my cell, in the county jail, you know, I cried out to God and I said, I'm done. And I called uh, the homeboy on the phone and I told him to tell whoever. I said, man, you need to tell whoever you need to tell, but tell them I'm done. I'm not banging no more. I'm, I'm not part of that lifestyle. You know, I'm giving my life to God. And so from that day forward, uh, I just started seeking God with all my heart, you know. And uh, I told God, I said, man, Lord, man, if you are willing, don't let me rot in prison. But whatever it may be, I'm going to serve you in prison or out of prison. You know, I'm going to be, you know, whatever you want me to be, Lord. And, uh, you know, long story short, they, they gave me a uh, seven year state. They gave me three years over here for state. They gave me uh, 60 months fed, which is equal to five years. And they ran it all together, which uh, I would only have to do five years out of all these, all this stuff. And I, I believe that was nothing but God, you know. Yeah. But in, in reality, I know God knew my heart. You know, it says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And God knows everything. So when I cried out to him, God, I believe God took it and said, OK, he's serious. He is serious. So I'm going to use him in a mighty way. And uh, so what he's going to what he did was he used me in there. He sharpened me up. And it was I, I, I can admit it to this, this day that going to prison this last time was the best blessing I could ever receive because I got mm -hmm. this relationship with God. I drew closer to God. I was in his word 24 seven for years and just in a cell, just studying. And he was just ministering to me. You know, the Holy Spirit was just guiding me. And man, it was equipping me. You know, you know, it was that was like my wilderness with God for these like four years you know just in a cell and he just was pouring into me to where uh and it was like finally when i started getting close to getting out he was like man you're ready to hit the streets you know and what's so cool is uh i didn't keep contact with nobody in there like i said i was just in god's word tough like i i kept contact with my family a little bit but still i was in god's word and and i told god i said to god you know I don't know what you want me to do, you know, and it's like he told me, he said, man, I want you to go back and go tell those people you used to hang around. Go go in those streets, those gutters, those hard to hit places and go shine my lights. Let them know that, hey, I transformed you. I could do it for them. So that was my my plan. You know, I was like, OK, God, that's what I'm going to do. So when I made it to a federal halfway house, uh, I talked to Brother David. And I didn't even know that what he was he his life was changed. You know, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I just thought I was gonna be my, myself out there doing this stuff. And uh the brother you know sent me his information. I call him while I'm in uh the halfway house because we can have phones and I and he used to go by tiny, but it's brother David now. And I said, Hey, what's up, bro? And he's like, Who's this? And I was like, Man, I used to go by demon, but I go by Ray, but don't call me demon no more. I, man, the Holy Spirit was in our conversation, and man, both of us was just filled with joy, and I could tell his heart was on fire for the stuff I was on fire for, and I asked him what they do, and he was telling me, you know, that they hit the streets, and I said, man, that's crazy, because I've been asking God, what did he want me to do, and it's like he connected us, because your heart is where my heart's at, too, for these people, and man, it was just, I, I believe it was all God-ordained, and this ministry is God-ordained, you know, the Banging for Jesus, yeah. we're a lot of ex-gang members that mm. come together to go and shine a light in those, those hard-hit areas to let no other gang members know that, hey, we was once enemies, but now we're brothers in Christ, you know, and, and we just w welcome and with open arms to all these brothers out there that are living that lifestyle that want out, you know. But, yeah, that's what God did, you know, and that's just a little bit of, of my testimony of how yeah. God works and how powerful and how loving and how merciful for he is. And I'm so grateful and thankful for what he did in my life today. And I thank you, Crystal, for just letting me come on here and just share a little bit some something, something with uh, whoever's watching, you know, that God hears your prayers, that loves you and uh there's hope. If there was hope for me, there's hope for you. And he loves you just like he loves me. Yeah, man, Ray, I, I love your story, dude. Uh, you know, God shines the brightest in the biggest darkness. And I love when you said people were like, you, this guy ain't got no hope because now you're hope filled, you know, hopeless, Amen. hope filled. And you're a soldier for the streets and you're still a soldier for the streets, but it's different. You were oh, a soldier yeah enemy you were sent out by the enemy or whatever gang affiliation but at the end of the day it was still the enemy you know what i mean the devil yeah. so now i've seen y'all at work y'all are foot soldiers y'all are still just as much you know uh doing stuff in the streets and in, in the hard places and going into those dark places but you're there for the lord now 
And so I just, I, I worked with y'all several times. I love what y'all do. Y'all run hard. I know y'all used to run hard, but y'all run hard still, but in a different way. And oh, yeah. I, just, I love working with y'all. Some of my favorite guys to work with for sure. And um, I just, I love it, man. The bigger the sentence, the bigger the victory. You know, it's like, would you oh, say yeah. 30, 40 years? I mean, they were talking a long time for you. Oh, and, yeah. And God said, I ain't worried about none of that. Let me hold on a minute. You know, like, I just, I love that. I love yeah. that. And so, it is, and, you know, and there's, there's hope with the Lord, you know, anything's possible, you know, and we look at our circumstances and we see that there's nothing good going to come out of this or there's no other way. That's when God shows up and says, there is a way. I am the way, the truth and the life, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. You know, one more thing and I'll let you go. I know you got something to do, but uh, it really encourages me because, you know, we do street ministry and there's times when you see people that are talking to themselves and or, or the spirits and, you know, it, it, it in our flesh, we can be like, man, I don't know if that one can be saved. I don't know. I don't know about that. You know, like being honest, yeah. like these moments yeah. we have those thoughts. And so seeing you um, and, and hearing your story also reminds me that those people can be saved. Uh, it just, you know, we got to sow the seed and count on God to raise the harvest. And, um, you know, so like when, when we want to go under that bridge and talk to that person that's that's really far gone, there's still hope because in ways, I mean, you may not have been on a bridge, but there were ways that you you were too far gone that someone might have said. And now look, you know, you're yeah. under the Lord. So I appreciate the encouragement. I received from this too. I don't know if people realize that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So that's good. It's yeah. good. Thank you for All having right. me. And you have a blessed day too. Okay. You too, Raymond. We'll see you soon, brother. All right. God bless you. All right. Thank you. All right. See you later. All right, guys. I just I'm telling you, banging for Jesus is some of my absolute favorite ministers. Um, and they're they are the definition of street soldiers. And like Luis, uh, which is one of the the like founders, presidents, I don't know how they word that, uh, of their group. He's one of my real good buddies. They're all part of the Alliance, technically, because they're in under an organization. But, um, I mean, people, they will go to the least of these. And see, this is the thing. Let me just say this. I'm going to bring Lacey on. People, a lot of times, will be like, oh, well, you need to dye your hair. Or, you know, you shouldn't get tattoos and this and that. Sometimes these things and this hair and stuff gets me a pass where the sweet little church lady on the front row don't get um, you know what I mean? I'm allowed into places. And that guy, did you see the face tattoos? If he approaches you, he don't exactly scream, you know, his whole story. You know what I mean? Like he's allowed into places to reach into darkness and pull people out in a special way because of what he's been through, because of his story. God uses everything. You know what I mean? And so I just love Ray. I love David. I love Louise, all of the, the banging for Jesus brothers, because, um, at first glance, you don't know their story, you know? I mean, the this is from a worldly perspective. The world looks at us and they're like, you know, because I go to a lot of places, guys. This is funny. At least once a month, someone tries to lead me to Jesus. I'm like, that's cute. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can I pray for you? You know what I mean? It's just, it's funny to me. And so these guys get the same kind of thing. And I, I was just at some of the Billy Brims thing on the mountain. And this lady was trying to tell me how to receive Jesus. And I'm like... Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not mad about it. It's just when you don't realize that not everyone's blonde haired and blue eyed and perfect uh, on the front row of a church and never sinned and never been to jail. You know, if, if you pull yourself out of that perspective and realize that some of that, some of um, the rougher people can shine some bright light too. Um, it's just funny because that's beautiful, perfect little church lady is not going to talk to somebody with purple hair and tattoos uh, the same way that someone with purple hair and tattoos. Well, you know what I mean? So it's just funny to me. It, it's, it's a blessing. I love their heart. Their heart is to save. And so that part I'm okay with. I understand that. It just cracks me up. But anyway, Lacey has a great story. Um, I, I just absolutely love Lacey y'all. She's, she's working in some hard areas. Um, she's running a purity group, um, at beautiful restoration, her and another lady, um, she's doing a lot of stuff and I hope she'll talk about her background because that's another thing that people don't realize is you, you hear certain backgrounds and you assume certain things for certain people. And I'll let her unpack that. I don't want to give it away, but with doing some of the stuff that I've done in the past, working with different organizations, I'm being vague for a reason. Um, 
you assume, oh, well, the, this and this happened to them. So therefore their future is this. And we've all like, let's not get religious. Let's be honest. We've all had those fleshly thoughts. That's that's happened. You know what I mean? But Lacey breaks a lot of stigmatisms. Lacey breaks a lot of uh, stereotypes. And, um, you know, like she's one of those people that you would look at and you would not guess what all she's overcome. And I just, I love that about Lacey. I love her heart for the Lord. I love that she's doing a purity group because everybody wants to sweep that under the rug. And so I was like, get them girl. I love it. So anyway, let me bring her on and uh, see what she's going to say. Hey girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm so honored. Uh, every time you yeah. ask me, I'm just like, yes, please. Let me <laughs> get at somewhere to give me my testimony. Let me tell Amen. someone about Jesus. Yeah. So are you willing to kind of unpack that a little bit? Because I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> his his testimony ain't far off from mine. It's crazy. You Most people, when I start to give him my testimony, they're like, uh-uh, mm -mm, nah. I was in the gang life. I was in the street life. I've been in shootouts. Yeah. You know, the devil wow. tried to take my life several times. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You start thinking about the past and it's like i'm not even that person no more yeah. like, the bible says you know he makes a new creation he truly did with us you know he mm -hmm. truly did with us um mm -hmm. i remember being beat into the gang you know two or three girls wow. coming at me um you know and then it just uh allowed me to to do everything that i i needed to do to, to survive on the streets um, yeah. coming out of foster care at the age of 19 not having nowhere to go you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just found the family business, which is, uh, you know, making meth and selling meth and then got addicted to meth, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you know, and all the money that you make. Um, it's a, it, <clears throat> it, it, the greed that comes with it and everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I have the testimony of God saved my life. I don't know how many times I smoked meth with a group of people and all of them lost their mind. But me, there was five of us all oh, wow. together. I mean, I should have lost my mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of them are, are dead. They're not even alive anymore. Wow. That's a deep testimony that I had such a calling that God wanted me to live so much that he kept me from those things. Um, wow. And I, it's just, okay. you know, when he was giving his testimony, all these things that God has done for me just started flooding my soul and my spirit all over again, just giving me this joy of Lord. <laughs> oh, you're so good. You are yeah. so good. And like I said, people look at me and I start giving my testimony and they're like, what? Uh, <laughs> you the blonde hair, blue eyed girl. You ain't got yeah. no tattoos. Like, I don't <laughs> needles. I'm sorry. The only thing I didn't do was heroin because I didn't like no needles. Here. Oh my God, I love you. That's so funny. <laughs> but I'm a quieter spirit now, you know. God, yeah. I, like I said, a new new creation. He made me mm -hmm. a new creation. You know, I'm gentle in spirit because His spirit lives in me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can be loud. I promise you. And I ain't scared. Uh, you know those those yeah. people you were talking about, Crystal, where you look at them and they're mm -hmm. talking to the spirits. You know the mm -hmm. ones with the legions. That's yeah. when my heart burns. You know because we saw that living on the streets. You see those people walk. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones we went to to make. You know if they had a little bit of money. Those are the ones we went to. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's so it was so sad. Um, mm -hmm. But those are the ones that my heart cry out for, and those are the ones that God said the disciples. Um, <laughs> you know, try to cast out the demons and the boy and couldn't. Yeah. And Jesus, they brought him to Jesus and said, why couldn't I do this? Because you, you, they only come out by prayer and fasting. When mm -hmm. are we going to submit ourselves to fasting for other people? When are yeah. we going to come to a unified uh, place in our lives where we can fast, where we can not eat food, not give our, our flesh the screen time, not give our flesh mm -hmm. what it wants so that we can uh, save these people because that's what the Bible says it's going to take, right? They're the, they're truly the least of these and yeah. we have to do the bigger things for them to, to mm -hmm. bring them out. I was giving my testimony the other day and I said, you know, he brought me out of hell so that I could go back into it and pull as yeah, much as on. I can, um, yeah. you know, and I, I, I want to do that, you know, and it's so good that he's called me to do. He says, Lord, uh, Lacey, you're my mouth, you know, you're my hands, and my feet, you're the body, you're the temple, yeah. and I need you to do these things. And so he's calling me to, 
you you said I was, you know, with, I'm a, a leader of beautiful restorations. I love what they mm -hmm. do. Um, they're starting a podcast and they've called me to help with the podcast, which is just awesome. So I'm writing and doing different things for, for them to, to accomplish that goal. And the Lord told me a year ago, I'd be on a podcast <laughs> and it start in June, gave the yeah. same Susan Kelly, the same, same exact word. And she won the, put the money up for it. Um, wow. and a week before I said, Lord, you have all these things. And Ryan Johnson said, gave a word on his social media and said, uh, you're asking for the wrong things. You're asking for the resources when you should be asking for the people who have the resources. So a week prior mm -hmm. to this whole conversation, I said, Lord, bring the people who have the resources. Have you put this in my heart that I'm going to be yeah. doing a podcast? That I'm going to be using th this voice, this girly voice for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, given all these yeah. words that you have in my heart to pour out, because I've been writing. I, I'm a writer. I write. I just mm -hmm. study the word and I write and I write and I write. So I have all this material just to, but I've been so shy and I'm just, I'm lazy. I had to pray away the laziness, you know, the slumber yeah. spirit, Lord, huh, help me. Um, but then a week later, he, he called Susan Kelly to BR and she was like, I, I'm going to foot the bill for this podcast. Who wants to be a part? And I'm like, no way. I just told Kayleen. <laughs> and I was like, and our, it lined oh, up exactly one year and we begin in June. How crazy yeah. is that? Um, and then the purity, you know, the world, we don't know nothing about purity. We don't know anything about holiness. My whole life, I thought I was going to have to live in the sexual sin that I did because it was so deep rooted, you know, right. from the age of two. Uh, being, you know, just, but he called me out of it, out yeah. of it. He, he sustained me in the grace, mm. but he said, there's a time to come out of it. And so, uh, I get to be holy as he is holy because he's called me into that. Uh, yeah. I just submitted myself to him and I'm allowed to walk in the being of him. <laughs> And uh, it's not nothing that we can do in and of ourselves. It's us submitting truly to being the hands and feet and just allowing the spirit to completely take over. And I love, uh, I love teaching it, you know, um, mm -hmm. because again, it's, it's all him. I'm just teaching people how to submit. How do you submit to the Holy <laughs> spirit? That's <Right>. it. <laughs> That's how you become pure and holy as he is holy by just really giving all of yourself uh, mm -hmm. to him and that's when the glory comes in and this miracle signs and wonders gets to follow those things which i'm you know i'm yet to see the you know but it's coming close i can taste it you know i can see the light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. um and abiding that i'm in a place of abiding in him and he's abiding in me you know mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. a great thing <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, just a plug again. Uh, I'm doing now, uh, now is the time, you know, now is the time mm -hmm. to be delivered, to get rid of the strong man, yeah. to step into God's calling. We are destined and we have a purpose and, and a place. Mm -hmm. And now is the time. And yeah. so I'm just calling people, uh, to a zoom to, uh, to, to do zoom every Tuesday at six 30, I'm going to do some zoom. Mm -hmm. They're closed because the material is ripe and, you mm -hmm. know, we need a safe place to, uh, to share the deep and hard things. So iron can sharpen iron, you know, to go to glory, to glory. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I'll be releasing a lot of the material that I've written in this group too. So mm -hmm. I'm just hoping to feed, you know, I've been, I've been fed so much. You can tell, you know, <laughs> you're a man. I love you. Uh, I'm ready to feed other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know, you know, you're you're, you're yeah. doing it right now, Crystal. Yeah. You know, let's see. Um, when you told me that you aged out of foster care, I was surprised. Um, I'll be really honest with you. Like we've done a lot of foster care work a lot and I've seen some horrific stuff. I mean, um, I had some distant cousins, not super close cousins, but they grew up in foster care. Um, there were times in my life that if anyone would have cared, I probably would have been in foster care. Um, thankfully that didn't happen. Um, you know, I'm thankful for the journey of how that work, you know, ended up working out despite how bad it was at times. But, you know, a lot of times when people grow up and age out of that, 
sadly, and this isn't a judgment, this is just what I've observed. Um, they're the people we're feeding under the bridge. They're the people that are sold into sex trafficking. Um, there are people that are in prostitution a lot of times. And so I say that with just a broken heart for them, because originally our plan was to take those 13, 14, 15 year old foster kids and try to give them something better, you know, to help them get on a better path. Because they're the ones that a lot of times have a harder time getting into homes and kept in homes. I mean, you know that, you know. And um, so those are really hard places. But to look at you and hear your story, you don't wear it. It's not a badge. It's not an obvious. It's not a um, it's not a piece of your identity. You know, you are sadly, but thankfully, the exception. You know, I, I want more people to have your story. You know what I mean? But you're probably the only one that I know that's an adult that can say that they've aged out of foster care that. It isn't obvious in some way. You know what I mean? I think he started out with me at a really <laughs> young age, you know, seven, eight mm -hmm. years old. I, I was smart. He just gave me a, an intellect. Um, and he, he it was a gift. It truly is a gift. You know, I went through school mm -hmm. and, and people were like, you don't seem like you're in foster care. And I was like, what does that mean? What are y'all even saying? I don't understand. Yeah. understand. But then, you know, going through foster care, I, I understand what they started, what they were saying. You know, I, I didn't wear it as a, a badge. I, I wasn't this confused uh, mm -hmm. lack of identity. Like he, yeah. I knew him at a real young age. Luckily, I was in a lot of foster homes. I went to church. Now they were Baptist church, but they fed me a lot of the word. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I knew the word from a really young age. Uh, every time they tried, they dunked me. I don't know how many times I've been dunked. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're going to save you again, girl. Hallelujah. Um, I love it. That's but so at funny. a young age, I had a really strong intellect. I was smart mm -hmm. and I read the room. I had the sermon out the wazoo. Like I just knew mm -hmm. things I shouldn't have known at a young age. And it kept me. It kept me. I was 15 years of age and I started working almost full time as much as my foster dad would let me. I owned my own car before I even had my driver's license because wow. I knew that I was going to be alone once I hit mm. the streets. Once I turned 19 because I, I graduated at the age of 19. I knew once I turned 19, I was out. And not because the family that I was living with because I, I kind of got semi adopted at the age of 14. But they didn't like who I loved. I loved men of other colors and they yeah. was from Texas. They were very religious and yeah. uh, judgmental and racial people. It's just what it was, um, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, my first boyfriend, my first kiss, my first everything was with a man of another color. And they did not like that. They didn't understand that this is um, what was comfortable to me in some type of way. Right. And mm -hmm. so when I got my first boyfriend, they said, you either let him go or you got to go. And I said, I'm sorry, I got my own car. I got a job. I, mean, I, don't, I don't really need you anymore. I had graduated mm -hmm. and decided that now is my time to, you know, kind of leave the nest if you will. And they taught me so much of Jesus, but then I saw so much hate in their eyes and I didn't understand it. How can you love Jesus so much? You sh showed me, I knew that they knew Jesus because mm -hmm. I, I, I knew I learned all of this stuff from them, but how can you have this little piece of hate that's so deep rooted um, mm -hmm. for no reason <laughs> other than the color of their skin? Like I didn't understand yeah. it. I, no, I couldn't understand it at all and right. so I to pray through that that was kind of a church hurt type situation you know right. um but it took the streets i had to go to the streets and spend some years now he didn't keep me there long i wasn't there you know when i had my son he he was two um and the lord said you want to raise him like your mama raised you and i said nope let's go <laughs> and i drove him to some place yeah. i didn't know and i set up root and I did nothing but read the Bible, go to church, and go to work for six years. I was in the wow. College of the Holy Spirit is what I called it. <laughs> but I love it. That's when he transformed. That's when he transformed me. But yeah, you know, I'm not this. I'm not this regular, regular person who came out of foster care. People, yeah. uh, people do look at me differently when I start saying some of those things. But it's because God kept me. He just kept me. Yeah. I didn't know why, but I do now. Because I have a word. He has a word. He has a purpose. Mm -hmm. He predestined me from before the world was created. Just like you and everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs>
It's funny, Lacey, I find you so relatable. You have no idea because even from the moment that I met you, um, when I was asked to pray over you the first time, I just felt just such a warrior spirit rise up and it was like I was fighting for myself, you know, and just in a, in a way I was. Do you care if, if what no, if I say what it was about? Yeah. Okay. Somewhere else, you got dark all of a sudden, by the way. I don't yeah, know what happened. Know. <laughs> Your light went out, girl. <laughs> Shine that light. Um uh, so I had just stepped out of, uh, of finally breaking off smoking medical marijuana. And so, and Lacey was coming out of that too. And, and, you know, there's no shame in condemnation in Christ. And I couldn't do you pills. Reach, People don't understand. Yeah. I was addicted to pills. I was addicted yeah. to Tylenol. I was addicted to ibuprofen. I was addicted to any man-made pill. Marijuana yeah. was a safe choice for me, yeah. you know, but it's still, God wanted that. it to be gone. Yeah. Well, for me, weed was the first and it was the last to go. I also was addicted to pills at one point. Every three to four hours, I was taking a new one because I wanted to stay high at one point. So when I had the back injury, it's like, well, do I go back to that or do I smoke marijuana? Because that's easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, I totally understand that logic. Um, at the same time, though, when I truly understood my identity in Christ and who God really said I was and how to lay it down and rely on him. It was like I was smoking for a choice at that point. Yep. And I couldn't continue where I was smoking as a choice. Um, you know, if someone has Parkinson's or an extreme illness or something like that, I do understand there's some other things there um, involved. Whether it's right or wrong, that's different. But to me, just smoking because of an emotion or anxiety. something a choice, something that it's an anxiety, something that uh, something like that, I just I can't get behind that anymore. I can't, and I can't choose for you. I can't choose for other people, but I could choose for me. And for me, I couldn't continue to be a leader in the church and run ministries and do what God was calling me into doing where I was. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't wear two, multiple masks anymore, two or three masks, you know? And so, um, yeah, I hear a typing in the background. Is there somebody typing? Uh -uh. Maybe that's on my side. I don't know. It's like a static. Oh, okay. I was like, maybe, maybe that's me. I don't know. But anyway, and you know, and in that year of sobriety, so much has happened. And I know so much has happened, you know, with you and, and your, your walk of things. And look at how much God's launched you into, you know, this groups and this, the Zoom. And, you know, you, you were the first one we asked to be a disciple in the Power Evangelist group. And, you know, oh, God's done so much with you, you know. He's good. God is good. <laughs> I'll say it every time. God is good. God is good. Yeah, God, yeah. He is a good God and He is true. He is yeah. real. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And your daughter is so um is so accepted, you know, and so loved and celebrated. And you know, she just um has so many people just love and adore her at church. And you know, sometimes that's hard when you're coming into a church as a mom or a single mom. What do you do with the kid? Like, well, how does that work out? You know, and so um, I just think it really solidifies that you're where you need to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and and to just to further on that, Crystal, like you know, my son has come to this church more than he has any of the other churches in the past, you know, four to seven years, um, because he feels something there. Now it, it's loud; it's the loudest church. So yeah. sometimes that, but. Um, <laughs> The, the day the first day that I was there is when the the teenagers prayed for chastity and she fell out in the spirit and yeah. the, that was the day the Lord said this is where you need to bring Caban and so yeah. and and Caban's a baby stepper I was a baby stepper you know I wasn't never one of those people who just turned around real fast he had a mm -hmm. I was here well this goes and then this goes and some years later this goes like is this is a 15 year process this didn't happen overnight you know what i mean yeah and for caven he's kind of the same way but he uh he went into a um what uh what is it where you don't want to go out of the house uh crab or what do they call uh, it uh, being a hermit crab yeah the hermit crab he was a hermit crab and then 2020 yeah. told him oh you don't have to go out into society no more and mm -hmm. he took it literally and so I'm he, the Holy Spirit. I had to give him to the Holy Spirit because I dragged him out of the house by the hair of his head more than once. And he just walked right back home and he got bigger than me. And I was like, okay, Lord, he's yours now. He's oh, me. Like, what can I do? Like, I can't beat him with a, a bat. Or, no, I can't beat him. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm just not going to do that. I love him too much. 
Um, And he was, so I was like, Holy Spirit here, you know, he's yours. And Mm. slowly and slowly and slowly, I'm seeing this transformation back to the son that he was when he was little, you know, when I wasn't, um, because he was raised in church in every prayer group. He sat and was quiet and listened to women upon women and praying. And then, Mm. you know, I fell into, um, I relapsed uh, about four, four, well, she's five. So five years ago and had my daughter. And then just, you know, lived in sin for some time. And he saw that I was a different person. And he didn't like the person that I was those years. And so now he's seeing me back transformed to this person that God has called me to be. And slowly he's getting this, this discernment and understanding. And, you know, I pray constantly. I take the Bible literally. So I'm constantly praying. And he's always like, you know, just last night, he was like, what are you praying for? It was like the middle of the night he came in to use the bathroom and I was just up praying. He's like, what are you praying for? And I was like, Kevin, when I'm not praying, no, mom, what are you praying for? Oh, all right. Let me tell you, uh, our family, everybody that's coming to my mind, like every, but he's, he's this, um, this yearning for the spirit the yearning for church and people even and Mm -hmm. and i'll uh stay out night at 11 you know sunday night services i come home late Mm -hmm. he wants to glean from me i can't just go to bed he wants (laughs) to ask me questions and how was it and what you learn and um he's studying his own and and then comes and asks me questions and different things and so I pray soon uh, that he'll be coming to church every day. <laughs> every time I'm in that building, he'll be coming. Yeah. Uh, he's waiting. He's getting his weight on and stuff like that, like getting buff. And I just called it <laughs> out. I, I said, uh, I prophesied. I was like, yep, when I start evangelizing, doing all my tours across America, you're going to be my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like mama. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. You know, God is definitely raising up people out of the ashes and uh, the unknown, the unseen, and really doing something. So, well, Lacey, I appreciate Thanks you coming on, sister. I love you. See that pretty girl back there? I see your head bobbing around. I know. She likes to pop in every once in a while. I got to get on to her, but she's like, listen. Hey, little friend. Say hi. Hey, pretty. Um, oh, really? You ain't going to come show how pretty you are? You ain't going to show that? Come here. Come here. This is my buddy. <laughs> This is my buddy, Alyssa Joy. Hey, pretty girl. She's like, who's that? <laughs> what an honor. It's my friend. I love her. I love you, Nicole. All right. I love you, honey. I'll see you later. God Bye-bye, bless you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, honey. She's so sweet. I love that kiddo. Uh, she's a special child for sure. Um, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today. Um, the testimony is always inspire and encourage me and i i honestly love hearing people's stories because honestly the darker the bigger the turnaround and that just inspires me that you know like we've all got a story we've all had some crazy stuff happen and you know when she said about god sustaining her and 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 keeping her hidden away i think is how she worded it i can remember having a wreck and god being like you shouldn't have been here or I protected you or, um, you know, there's different moments where even in being drunk, cause I will tell you one thing, people, excuse me, that was a surprise for people to say, um, that, you know, you can't hear from God when you're high or drunk. That's a lie. That is a lie. I know people high on meth or high on weed or alcohol or whatever, and you can hear God's voice. Um, is that, is that the, the way to go to him? Not what I'm saying. But it's possible because God, the father, Jesus Christ is stronger than any drug, alcohol, substance that there ever was. Okay, I know people who came back to church drunk and ashamed of the way they came. But like, I just got to get back to the Lord. And now they're leaders. You know, was it overnight? Absolutely not. But it started the process. They heard God, the father. A lot of them have said when they walked into the presence of the Lord, they actually sobered up on the spot. And um, God is sobering. Amen. (laughs) And so I remember being 17, 18 year old, uh, drunk, just being just dumb as a box of rocks in certain ways. And God speaking to me, even in that moment, I have more for you. I have more for you. There's something else. You're not going to stay here forever. This isn't for just all these little whispers in the back of my head. And I knew that I knew no matter what. And I, I, 
you got to understand, I moved a lot, but I made mom promise me from sixth grade on that that'd be the last school I went to. And she did hold that, hold that promise. Um, I graduated from a tiny little school, 1800 people, like 600 in school. I mean, it was a spot in the road. I loved that town. I loved it. They took me in open arms. Like I found my place. Um, I don't know where I'd be if I'd stayed at some of the other places. Um, you know, obviously God has a way, but I'm just saying like, it was a great place. Even in that, though, I knew that I knew that I knew God was saying, you're coming out of this town. I'm going to get you out of here. You're going to get out of here. The journey out was crazy um, and it was rocky and it was it got worse before it got better. Um, you know, I reached a place of suicide like I was I was really at the bottom of my barrel before I ended up in Oklahoma City. But even in that, I mean, I was living in it's technically a house. It was more like a ghetto shed. My mom lived in this junk hole for three or four years she made it better but i mean literally like it was it had holes on the wall cracks i mean a good breeze and you felt it was horrific horrible place and me and her were at each other's throats my husband was there we were trying to move it was just, it was a nightmare we had this huge fight one day and literally me and my husband went to this campground down the road and plugged in our phones and we were so mad at each other and my mom and just just filled with, uh, you know, just anger and just, just done, just done, done, done. And we put our backs to each other and we just cried out to God. And it was one of the most purest prayers. It was an eloquent or, you know, um, Holy Spirit fire. You know, it wasn't none of that. It wasn't none of that. But it was from the heart and it was a cry of the heart. And it was, God, I surrender. I absolutely surrender. I'm about to lose everything and I ain't got much left. You know, my phone was about to get shut off. I mean, I'm telling you, we was at the bottom. Okay. Like I was to the point I didn't want to talk to my mother again. Like, I mean, I, I didn't want to be with my husband really. Like I had nowhere else to run. The rope was, well, I was holding the end of it. You feel me? Like I was at the end of my rope. And as soon as we said, amen, Jordan Hensley called me, which is a girl that used to be my roommate when I was in my stupid big time. She called me and I mean, as soon as we said, I mean, she called it and she doesn't spirit filled. I mean, I, I think she believes, but I mean, we're on different planets now, but literally she's, she was like, man, come to Oklahoma city. There's jobs here. Like you can sleep on my floor. We'll help you get a place like whatever. And I was like, dude, I ain't got nothing else. I honestly, like I have nothing left to lose truthfully. And so, um, I was just like, you know what? Why not? Why not? So I spent the next two or three days just hating life, but putting it, made my resume on one of them sites. And I submitted that resume to probably about 150 different places in Oklahoma city. And in three or four days, I had about four or five interviews. And then I was like, how the heck am I getting over it? Cause my car is boo boo. That car actually made it to Oklahoma city and back twice before it passed away. I slept on Jordan's floor for two plus weeks working, um, technically two jobs with the first one I got fired for them because I failed a drug test. And then the second one, which is the one I took first. So it makes no sense. I took the drug test for the one I ended up with, started another one in between, failed that one's drug test, but ended up passing the first one's drug test and worked at this one for two to three years. But God literally made no sense. I didn't use drugs in between like at all. So whatever, but God. Okay. And ended up working there two or three years, life changed, got on my feet, between me and my husband, we ended up making around 50000 a year together, which is more than we'd ever made together. Got our own place, got settled. Like God began to change our lives. And um, I didn't immediately start into church. I ended up back on drugs, unfortunately. I'd love to tell you that's the time we all got it all together. But it was a step towards getting it together. Um, what actually really uh, started the process of us going to church, sorry, when I was itching like crazy, um, is <laughs> I was doing foster care already, had Cynthia in Dollar Tree, and I was talking to her, and this lady came from around the corner, and said, y'all are just so sweet. And she could tell she wasn't mine. I don't remember what I said to the lady, but long story short, the lady ended up offering to pray for me in Dollar Tree, which is so funny because I'm like, I will never do this. What do I do now? Me and Mark teach evangelism in our church. I totally pray for people in stores. Like this is what we do now. And so God's so funny. But anyway, and I, I was like, man, if somebody's doing that, I need to go to church. I need to go to her church. The church that I went to, 
was honestly, uh, in a lot of ways, horrible to me. Horrible. Um, I was a redhead stepchild with purple hair. Like, it was bad. Uh, very unloved, very much church hurt, very rejected. But it started something. It started a path. It started a hunger. Um, it helped me to see a lot of things so that when I had better, I understood that I had better. Um, that church ended up shutting down. Different things like that happened. Um, and I ended up where I'm at the church I'm at now with literally to the end of the point. Like, God, this is it, dude. This is it. If this doesn't work for me, I don't know that I'm, I don't know where I'm at. I'm not saying I was at the place of suicidal. That thought always had a way of reappearing, but um, it was just like, I'm just, I'm not going to keep bouncing churches until I find someone that loves me and treats me right. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And thankfully um, this church has taught me leaps and bounds, monumental amount, like, uh, it's, it's changed my perspective, even that you don't really need a church to be, um, walking with the Lord. Um, I believe everyone should have some kind of church, parachurch, home church, 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 whatever. You need to have some kind of fellowship. Uh, we are called to assemble together. And honestly, it's a lot easier to stay in your addiction and stay on your couch and flipping the lazy, you know, clicking in the lazy boy. If you don't ever actually have someone that's there to love you and hold you accountable. And so that was huge for me because one thing that I can say Pastor Ren did at Freedom Fellowship, which is where I'm at now, um, he would get in the crap with me. He would absolutely get in the crap with me. And he would be like, hey, I love you. You want to be a leader, right? You you're clearly have leadership skills. You want to be a leader, right? OK, well, you can't do this and this. OK, well, um, let me ask you about this. Like it was never shame and condemnation. It was correction. And I reached a place that I trusted him enough that I was able to receive correction. And now the, the people from Arkansas that I was running drugs with, being stupid with, partying or, you know, doing all my insanity. Um, they call me when the when the floor is falling out from under them. Um, they call me when they're, you know, suicidal. They call me when uh, their wife's left them and um, when they're at the end of their rope. And so just like uh, Ray and Lacey um, and a lot of people we've had on here, really, not just us. God has, has called me. <laughs> Pastor Ring gave me this term and I love it. So I'm going to use it. He's called me to be a robber of hell. He's called me to reach back into the darkness and pull someone else out. And that's the model of Christ. If you really look at it, that's discipleship. That's that's a leadership model. It's all of it. You should always be reaching out to someone to keep pulling you up and you should always be pulling someone else down. We're called to be conduits. And, and the love of Christ is supposed to pass through us and pull someone else up. And now I'm pulling up a lot of people. And it's, it's not because I'm awesome and cool, which I am pretty awesome and cool, but... <laughs> I'm allowed to reach into other people's lives. I'm allowed to mentor people. Um, I'm allowed to do a lot of things. For example, which is something I wanted to, to plug while I was here, um, this hat. It says, make Jesus known. It's a little hard to see unless I get close. Um, I'm getting to help uh, be a rep for um, Together 22, uh, it, which is not a huge qualification, guys. Uh, anybody can. But the point is, Together 22 is at the Cotton Bowl uh, Stadium in Dallas, Texas. And it is a 50-year reunion of when Billy Graham did one of the largest evangelist training and launching, probably in the history of the world, definitely in the United States. Um, 100 plus thousand people, I think, showed up or close to that. It was a lot. They're doing the reunion of that and doing um, evangelism classes. I'm an evangelist and they taught to be better. It's ignorant to think you have it all together and know everything. Trust and believe you should always be getting more training. Um, so I'm taking a handful of people down there and we're going to Awaken the Dawn, which is another team I was invited to be a part of. Um, that one's quite a bit more selective. So I'm super honored to be a part of that. Um, for the Oklahoma City team. And then, of course, we go to other events. I just came from one, um, the middle of May, the Send, and the Awaken the Dawn team there. The point is in all this, guys, is A, if you want to go holler, um, and B, people wouldn't have invited me to do anything but smoke pot and 
have a party of ignorance before. That was the best I was ever going to get. And now I'm invited to be on teams. I was a leader, leader at Beautiful Restoration until I stepped down recently. And there's nothing against them. It's just because I'm moving to other places. I'm part of the traveling ministry team. Um, I'm part of the security team. I'm part of the leadership team. I run the, I'm the founder of the Jesus Alliance, the founder of Rock Solid Ministries. Um, like God has stepped me into so many more places that I'm so um, unqualified for by the world standards. And, but yet, but God, he keeps pulling these people of darkness into the light. And so I just want to encourage you and bless you and let you know, it's not like, look how cool I am. I get to do all this stuff. It's like, look what God has done in my life. You know, I mean, I, I've told y'all many times before I was trafficking meth out of Texas. Um, I've done every drug but heroin and, and uh, uh, crack, literally. Ecstasy, heroin or uh, ecstasy, coke, meth, every pill you can think of. Like, I'm telling you, like, I've been there. I've done that. I've destroyed families. You know, I've, I've sold to people that I knew I shouldn't be even selling to. You know, I thought that earlier when Lacey was saying about selling to the people talking to themselves and they had a little money and. She didn't say it, but I know what that feels like. She doesn't say that in a bragging way. She says that honestly out of hurt or telling the truth. But there's a piece of that that hurts because it's like, you know, you made that person worse. And I know I made many families worse. I know I can I contributed to families that were just as broken as the family I grew up in. And but yet I still did it to make some money. And because I wanted to feed what I had going and I, and it was a hustle mentality. That's another thing people don't realize is when you're out there selling drugs, you're doing this stuff, you're moving and shaking. There's an adrenaline rush to it. There's a hype to it. There's a, there's a go getter feeling. There's a, and it, and it's fun in that aspect, but the reality is, and what people don't realize is if you will submit to the father and you will do the things he's calling you to do, there is just as much, if not more excitement and feel good spiritually and lack of guilt and shame, praise God, when you run like that for the Lord and he will and can allow you to do that. You know, I enjoy for the most part um, being busy. I enjoy running for the Lord. I enjoy submitting my days and my time to God, the father and to um, God, what do you want me to do today? And do I ask him that every day? I'm not going to lie to you. No, I don't. Uh, I do not. But normally my schedule is so dictated in advance. I pretty well know what I'm called to do, you know, but it's, it's a blessing and an honor and a privilege. And it gives you that same kind of good feeling when you're out there running for the Lord and you're doing things for the kingdom of God. And you know that you're making an impact and you don't have that guilt in your chest and your heart of, Oh, I just sold $150 worth of meth. I hope that don't tear up their family. Oh, well, you know, because at some point the, oh, well, doesn't land the same way. You have guilt and shame and condemnation for what you just did. And you bury it by doing your own drugs or you bury it by other things. I remember when I was getting ready to quit smoking weed, um, the pastor's oldest son, Isaiah, and I were good friends already doing ministry. That's a whole nother story. And I was still coming out. I, I'd had a back injury. This is when my back injury was pretty serious. But when he would come over, I wasn't going to tell him the truth because I didn't plan to stay there forever. And I, I was like, I got, I'm going to get out of this, not out of lying to him, but out of uh, the situation and stop doing it. So I didn't want to air my dirty laundry. And I sure didn't think you'd understand. So I would strategically figure out, because I'm like Lacey, I'm too smart for my own good. Um, I would figure out how to turn the fan certain ways and certain air fresheners and crack this window and this window to push the smell of the weed out of this way. And then I would change clothes and I would do that. Like I had all these methods of getting away with my sin and I was good at it. But this is a thing. I'm the most honest person, you know, at some point I realized I was lying, lying through manipulation, still lying lying through knowing you should tell someone the truth truthfully and avoiding it is still lying. And, um, <laughs> there is, um, there's so much that God showed me through what I did. And just so you know, I did actually end up telling Isaiah, uh, Pastor Ren's son, I'd already came clean with other people, but I did take the time to talk to him and let him know, hey, I apologize. And I'm sincerely sorry that I didn't tell you the truth back then. He might have been able to help me in it, but I was scared. But the point is, we lie to ourselves and we manipulate these things um, and we run 
you know, and the shame and condemnation sat right here. And my brain was so tired of making sure I crossed all my T's and dotted all my I's and had to be so perfect all the time to have it right. Because what if he smelt it? What if he figured it out on his own? What if he went to his parents and told him that I was smoking around him? Like all these things all the time were in my head and I didn't want him to go certain places with this because I knew what I was going to be doing there. And, you know, it just, those things are exhausting. So when you, when you let those things go and you get out here and you run for the Lord, you don't have all that right here. You don't have all that up here. And that exhausted feeling of, did I do everything I was supposed to do? Yeah, you think that in other ways of like, man, did I did I get that order put in for the outreach coming up? Did I tell Jamie this? It's my assistant. Did I do this? Did I make that event? You still have that, but it's not a, with shame and condemnation attached to it. It's not heavy. It's not weighted. You know, I'd rather be up half the night for the Lord ministering to someone that's thinking about killing themselves or um, that needs help pulled out of darkness than I ever would high and drunk, you know, and I, I've always kind of been an extremist. Uh, if I do it, I'm going to do it big. If I, if I go, I'm going to go hard. Um, and the enemy hated when that finally turned for God all the way turned for God. And am I perfect and got it all together? No, come on, let's not lie. But I'm running and I'm not ever going back. And, uh, you know, I run really hard now and I was great at being bad. Let's see how great I can be at doing what the Lord says, you know? And so I just, uh, I'll end with that because I didn't plan to say all of that, but obviously somebody needed to hear it because I submit my words and my testimony and my life to the Lord. So if he chooses to bring it out, then that's what's going to be said. Amen. Um, so I will, I will just close with that and I'll pray for us before we go. Let me get a drink. I'm a chatty Kathy. It's coffee. So that was extra, but anyway, um, <laughs> uh, but guys, you know, I just, I just believe that when God has me tell things like that or say things like that, um, there's somebody that needs that. Somebody needs that, uh, that story. There's something in there and you wouldn't believe how many after these people message me and they send me screenshots of, Hey, my niece watched this and this is what she said back. And I just want you to know what you said or did mattered and stuff. So, Hey, there's nothing in my story that I'm not willing to share. Um, and I just trust God to use it for his glory. And he does. He does repeatedly. So if it wasn't for you, hopefully you enjoyed my antics. Um, and if it was, hopefully you share it out. And if you have more questions about the Awaken the Dawn uh, coming up in Texas, that's June 20th, really 20th. But I'll be there like 23rd, 24th, whatever, 22nd, if the Lord's willing. Uh, anyway. And then um, the actual event is the 24th evening and then all day the 25th of June. Um, the Awaken the Dawn, the one here in Oklahoma City is going to be redonkulous. And we will be promoting that very soon, but it will actually be in early October. Um, and then the follow trip. I think I mentioned that one. Um, that one we are looking for people to go with us. That is a very, very, very impoverished area um, with incredibly small amounts of resources, little car, high drug addiction, tons of kids, head lice, bed bugs, holes in the roof, no food, no running water, sometimes no electricity. I mean, it's bad. Okay. It's third world country bad. It's bad. Uh, and that's the thing because you follow your tourist area, but the second you step out of the tourist area and you go up on those mountains, there's kids everywhere and it's very poor church options, very little church options. Um, there's just a lot. And so if your heart is to go with me on that, message me directly to find out about that. All right. Uh, we will probably go every month or every other month. It just depends on what God says. I don't dictate my life or the way it goes. Amen. I just get in the car when I'm supposed to. <laughs> so Lord, I pray that you will bless every single person watching. <laughs> excuse me, both those that will watch now and watch later. I ask that you will touch their lives, that you will speak into the darkness and that you will drive it out by the light and the power of Jesus Christ. I ask that the Holy Spirit will move over every single person right now. And even as I say that, I feel like someone has neck pain. I'm getting a, I'm getting a highlight on neck pain. And so I say anybody that's having tightness in the neck, Anything that is out of order must come into order because earth must line up with heaven. That's what the word says. So I call that into alignment.
I come into agreement with the word of the Lord. And so I ask for a full healing for whoever that highlight is for, Lord. And I ask that you will just heal them from the top of their body to the soles of their feet, especially in the neck area. There's some, somebody's got a neck issue. Um, and I'm just seeing it kind of, well, you can't see where my hand is, right where the bend is. Is kind of where I'm seeing it, right where the bend is. And it's tighter on one side than the other, but it's tight on both sides. Um, and so muscles loose in the name of Jesus. You have no rights to this person. We bind the spirit of infirmity. We say you must go. You have no rights. And we rebuke you. We submit uh, the blood of Jesus. We call down the blood of Jesus over this place, over these people that are needing healing. And I ask that you will heal every single one of them, that you will touch them, and that your glory will be what manifests in their life, Lord. I ask that you will loose that muscle pain. If there's a bone out of alignment, I say come back in. If there's a crick, you must go. If there's any other kind of spiritual infliction that is affecting this, we bind you, we bind the enemy, and we say you have no place here. And so we come into the agreement with healing. And the people on here that are in agreement with this, just say amen, because when two or more are gathered, he is here. And when he is here, darkness has to run. Amen. So you have no place here. And so we just praise you. We'll put the blood of Jesus over this situation and over this broadcast that anyone that is having any kind of these issues or dealing with this, reach out to the people provided. I tagged them. I know their hearts, uh, myself included. We can link you up with whatever we need to do. If you're interested in those outreaches, reach out to me. And we just cover this whole broadcast in the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. And we just say, amen, amen. And just remember, y'all, saying in the name of Jesus Christ and a salutation, you're putting his name behind it. You're putting the power of Jesus behind your prayer so we don't say it lightly, okay? I love y'all. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, next Tuesday, we're going to do it in the evening. So keep up with that if you want to be on. Holla. Bye.